Hey guys, this is SmartBond from Western New York Airsoft League again, and today I've got a SKD Tactical Multicam Top from 2006, and the reason that I'm going to be reviewing this today is, although the Multicam Uniform is pretty common today, this SKD version is a little interesting in that it's a precursor to a lot of the other uniforms that were available at the time. I think um, the only other uniform that <clears throat> I know of that was really well known at the time was the actual cry pre precision version of this. So I'm going to review it as best I can, but also compare it to some of the more common digital patterns that have come into use in the last decade or so. Um, this particular jacket, like I said, I, I got in 2006. It is, uh, therefore, very much pre-proper, pre-standard um, issue for the U.S. Army, for troops in Afghanistan. And uh, it was, I want to say it was probably pioneered in 2005, which puts it about a year or two behind the actual invention of the pattern. And the pattern, which I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with, was, like I said, created in the early 2000s as a multi-environment pattern. And you can see all the different colors. Um, I believe there's, let's see here, probably five. I believe it's five. It's a little tough because some of the colors kind of meld into each other. But it was, it was meant to be able to blend in in a variety of environments and there is some debate on whether it's particularly effective outside of an arid environment. Um, that's really a, a discussion that I'm not going to touch just because it's very difficult to make a blanket statement about whether it works or whether it doesn't outside of um, a, a sandy or, or more arid environment. As far as Western New York is concerned, it works fairly well um, spring, summer, and fall. I, I've really never seen it in a winter environment, but it's, it's not a bad pattern by any means. Uh, I think it's gotten a lot of hate or, or at least dislike as it's gotten more popular and it's shown up a lot more in airsoft, which <coughs> naturally brings certain people who, who like the um, uniqueness of it at one point to dislike it more as it becomes more common or um, as it's bandied about as this super pattern that's capable of blending in an enemy environment. And I don't necessarily think it was designed as a, a universal pattern, but more as a multi-environment pattern. Um, as I said, this was created in early 2000s by Cry Precision, which makes it unique. Additionally, for um, one reason that it was a privately created pattern, and um, secondly, because it's not a digital pattern. A lot of places at the time were looking heavily into digital patterns following the late 90s introduction of MARPAT in the U.S. Marine Corps and uh, the introduction in the early 2000s of CADPAT in the Canadian military. So, this was interesting in that it was sort of going against the trend of the time and trying to create a traditionally patterned camouflage uniform that didn't rely on this, the digital pixelated look. Um, going on to the actual features, I'm going to run down the basics like usual. It's got this uh, top closure with typical plastic disc button, very similar to the BDU style. And <clears throat> it's got a covered system of buttons elsewhere. It's a five button set with a covered storm flap and um, that's similar to the Marine Corps style but very different than the, the later ACU cut which uses a zipper and velcro system. What's interesting though is it does have this set of hook and loop at the bottom which 
is designed to close up the uniform if the, the wearer wishes at the very end of it. Um, very similar to the trans guy pattern top that I was reviewing earlier, just that one used a, a hook and eyelet closure as opposed to a Velcro closure. Um, it, it's an interesting feature. Uh, it's been replicated elsewhere, both with the ACU pattern and other similar patterns, but the, the Velcro here is obviously much longer than on the ACU and, and much closer to the bottom. Um, another feature, going back up to the top, is this Mandarin collar, which I'm going to grab this ACU top real quick and just put it right next to it. Hopefully, it'll be a bit clearer putting them side by side. It's kind of hard to tell, but this is probably maybe an inch and a half in uh, width, width, whereas this one is more about two inches, so it's a, a slightly thicker Mandarin collar. You'll also know that this later collar has this bevel here, whereas this one's just a straight rectangular cut to it, so that's interesting. Also, I'm going to show where I've got it here. It's a little hard to see, but it's got a typical U.S. style tag on it with a uh, NATO size number and a sock number, which is interesting because it wasn't a standard issue in the military unit at the time. Um, and it doesn't have any other features to it that identify it as an SKD uniform, which is interesting as well. Um, moving on from there, we've got these two slant pockets, which, as you can see, have this hook and loop uh, Velcro as a closure. They didn't actually incorporate the Raid Mod um, style of putting just tabs of the hook and loop so that somebody could get a finger in there and open it up easier. So these are actually a bit difficult to open one-handed. Uh, that's interesting in and of itself, um, but for, you know, be, being that it was an early style with this hook and loop and um, sort of raid cut, <clears throat> they maybe hadn't learned that lesson yet. It's also interesting that it's got these name tape and uh, service spots with hook and loop, which again is interesting because it seems to indicate that they thought, and I'm sure it's for, for some, service members were buying these and needed that to conform at least to some degree to regulation. It's interesting too, and I, and I mentioned, mentioned this at the beginning, but this is actually a 50-50 Nyko nylon cotton blend as opposed to the more common cotton or poly cotton. It's non-ripstop. They later introduced a ripstop version, but it's just interesting in that sense to see what was available at the time. Um, and the, the ripstop version had not been created yet. Um, I will then go on to the wrist cinches, sorry, which are very similar to the ACU style. The Velcro is just a little bit thinner in width, and it uh, has sort of a, a shorter length of hook and loop as opposed to the ACU, which tends to have a, a bit longer of a um, strip of, of Velcro for you to, to open and close the, the, the cuffs to your liking. So these were a little less versatile. Um, going back up to the pouches or the, the pockets for one second, though, so you'll notice that these are much higher and much um, less canted than the ACU cut, which is interesting. Um, they're almost more of a Marpat style slant to them, which is, again, unusual because the ACU cut's much more common now. Um, other features are these integrated Velcro close pockets on the elbow for elbow pads, and then these arm pockets, which, again, 
were were a feature of the raid mod, but were very different than the Marpat cunt, which again there's this Velcro that runs all the way along as opposed to the buttons on the Marpat arm sleeves and it's got this Velcro for fixing um, name tags or patches, what have you. So those are on both arms. They're pretty much identical in construction. Nothing exciting, at least by today's standards, about those. At the time, they were definitely something different, unless you were wearing a Marpat uniform. Um, the other side, nothing really special here. Just a uh, fairly typical cut back. So, I actually have never worn this in the field. Partially because it's not rip -sap, uh Partially because I'm not a big multicam fan. Um, I don't see anything wrong with the pattern. It's just, it's very common. And anybody who knows me knows that I like stuff that's a little bit different, a little weird. At the time, this was a little bit different, a little bit weird. I knew of one other guy in our 200 person, possibly more, league that had this stuff. And um, so at the time, I, I, it was something cool, it was something different. But these days, I really don't have a whole lot of reason or occasion to wear it. I've got a set of the proper stuff that I've modified to... Uh, suit my, my needs for when I do need to wear it. But it's interesting, like I said, in that it's got a lot of weird, slightly different cuts and features to it as opposed to later uniforms. So hopefully you enjoyed looking at one of the early models of the ever-growing multi-cam craze. And I will be back soon, hopefully, with uh, something else goofy to show off to you guys.